There's four main processes that take place in a Christian's life. You have salvation, you have justification, you have sanctification, and you have glorification. Now salvation is when you've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior and confessed your sins. After that, you are saved. Justification happens through faith in Jesus Christ, saying that it's his finished work on the cross that paid for your sins and not your own works and your own behaviors. Sanctification is the process of cleaning up those behaviors, cleaning up your life to be made new as you are already new. Glorification happens on the other side of eternity. This is when you are fully glorified in God through Jesus Christ by entering into your redeemed body, entering into your fully holy self without sin, without blemish, without wrinkle, and without stain. Now, sanctification is a process that most often will happen throughout your entire lifetime. And it looks a little bit like this. For this, we're going to use an object lesson. I have this vacuum here that I used outside of its intended design and intended purpose and it messed up the motor inside and it clogged it a little bit. Now the motor is kind of going to be the representation of your heart and the mind is going to be God the Father and each hand is going to be God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And what we're going to do is we're going to take off these covers and break through these shells to get to the heart and see what the issue is. Now Jesus Christ, once you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, he's got a variety of tools that he can use to touch your heart and gain access to that. And one of those tools will be the Bible, the Word of God, the truth. And each one of these screwdrivers represents a different scripture. And each scripture will touch your heart in a different way and break loose these shells that you have that are around you. Now these shells can be coping mechanisms, they can be personality, they can be past hurts, past traumas, past pains um, that keep you protected. They, they guard your heart. Um, and most often before Christ in a really unhealthy way. Now the motor still functions, just like your heart still functions, um, but it may not function the best or be able to accomplish its intended purpose with all the gunk that's inside of there. So as you remove these screws, as scripture continues to touch your heart, and touch your uh, outer shell and soften the defenses that you've built up around yourself, it eventually gains more access into the heart. Now this is a process that for some Christians happens really, really fast, and for other Christians it happens really, really slow. see here we're starting to get some of the shell off then as the shell comes off we get exposed to the inner workings of the heart now sometimes God will need an extra tool or a different tool necessary to accomplish the same pur purpose. The important thing to realize is that most of these tools, all of these tools, are guided by the Trinity. It's not the tool itself that fixes the heart, but it is the operator of the tool and the know-how of how to use the tool that gets to the point to where the heart is changed in a way that is beneficial to the Christian. It's one of our layers of protection down. 
And as we look inside, we start to see all the muck that's built up over the years from all the times that we've tried to protect our heart in an unhealthy way. And as we expose more layers, we also expose more work that needs to be done. It's like an onion working on your heart. You get some of the big things out of the way, and then once you get inside, you notice some little things and some more stuff that needs cleaned up and changed. And as you continue to go through this process, you're able to gain access to the heart. And we keep continuing to pull off layers and getting further and further into the heart. So that way we can clean it up. Now what God does through this process is he uses the word of truth to convict your heart, to show you the areas and where you've fallen short, and draws you back into wholeness, saying, I want to clean you up. I want to make you new. You are already new and righteous in my eyes, so I'm going to do that process for you. It's through your strength, through his strength, that you're able to overcome and clean up some of the processes of your life. Now once we continue to get into the inner workings of a motor, we may eventually have to switch tools. Every tool that is used by the hands of the Creator is a tool that is valuable and will accomplish a specific purpose. Some tools could be the Word of God, being a screwdriver, each different screwdriver is a different scripture. It can also be a community. It could be prayer. It can be therapy and counseling. Sometimes it takes a little help from the Holy Spirit to guide you through counseling or through past traumas to really get to the core of the issue. Now each piece is crucial for the motor to run properly and each piece needs to be cleaned and looked at carefully to make sure that there's nothing that can interfere with the proper working of the motor. And as you look through it, as God looks through it, it starts to get a little cleaner and things move a little bit more free. And then you may need some more counseling you may need some more community
Now, an important thing to note is that no matter what tool is being used, as long as it is to clean up the heart, as long as it is to better you, as long as it is to glorify God in it, it is a valuable tool. Some things from culture are valuable in helping us find a level of wholeness, find a level of healing that draws us closer to God, that is directed by God, that is orchestrated by God, and that is used by God to change your life, to change your heart, and to change your mind, and draw you back to Him each and every day, more and more as the process goes on through. And as you get older, as you develop new patterns, as you develop new routines, and you have new coping mechanisms that are cleaned up, that are glorifying God, that are still protecting your heart, they're still protecting the motor, um, but they're doing it in a healthy way now. They're doing it in a God-honoring way now. As your life progresses, sometimes all you need is a rag uh, to keep the motor clean, to knock off some of the dust that's accumulated a little bit. And this could be your morning and evening devotions. This could be your prayer time. This could be your relationships with your friends, your family, uh, your community at church. This could be serving people. This could be helping people. Uh, it could be a gratitude journal. It could be a thankfulness list. It could be a conversation with somebody that you've had grievances against to seek out reconciliation. That's a beautiful process of sanctification, is it's really restoring you back to your original intended purpose. A lot of the times we see restoration as getting back to the old us, or before all the hard times came, or before the sin happened um, that really caused destruction in our lives. But for God, Restoration is bringing you back to your originally intended and created purpose, which is to serve Him and to glorify Him with your life and with what you do. It is to bring you back into right relationship with God through your actions and through your behaviors. There's a scripture that says, Faith without works is dead, and works without faith are dead. Your faith in Jesus Christ is what justifies you, what makes you right in God's eyes. Your works are evidence of that righteousness. And those works are constantly being restored. They're constantly being refreshed and renewed into more and more God-honoring works. Glorification is the process on the other side of eternity where you are free from sin where you are free from struggle, where you are free from temptation, and you're just glorifying and honoring God uh, for eternity. Some people think that glorification is a process that is attainable on this side of eternity. And unfortunately, I don't see any scriptural evidence that supports that ideology, that supports that thought process, that you can be made completely righteous, free from sin, this side of eternity. Now as we've cleaned up the guards, we put them back on. The guard closest to your heart is prayer. This is what keeps you constantly connected to the Father keeps you humble, keeps you secure in your standing with God. The next guard that we're going to put on will be your morning devotion. This is what keeps you connected to the Father in a way of hearing His words, fulfilling that other side of the conversation with Him. Each one of these bolts is a 
friend that's praying for you, that intercedes for you on your behalf, that can challenges you when you're stepping outside of the will of God, that talks to you when you're struggling, that helps you stay close to the Father, stay binded to the vine. This is a village effort. This is a community effort. This is something that we can't do on our own. This is an interdependence where we depend on each other. We depend on God. We depend on the people around us. That's why it's important to keep good company. I think somewhere in scripture it says, bad company corrupts good morals. And then this final shell here that protects you and is your source of power and is your first line of defense against anything that the enemy has to throw at you is your relationship with Jesus Christ. This keeps you connected to the source of power This keeps you grounded in your faith. And it keeps you safe and secure and protected with Jesus Christ. Now this is an object lesson of what sanctification looks like. It's a process that takes time, that is restorative that uh, involves a lot of things. It involves a lot of different tools. It involves a lot of different comprehensions and understandings. But most importantly, it's we must remember that it takes time for the sanctification process. It takes your entire lifetime to take apart, clean up, change the guards, change the protections that we put around ourselves in order to be closer to God in a deeper relationship with Jesus and ultimately more connected and more holy. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you comment, like, and share. Hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, please make sure that you submit them in the comment section below. I would love to answer them, talk about anything that you guys are unsure of. And I just want to hear from you. I want this to be a conversation, not just me spitting a bunch of opinions and a bunch of facts at you.